What's up, my beautiful cosmic family members and friends? All right, check this one out. True story. Single female, professional, educated. Have her fair share of drinks here and there. But this particular night, she decided to go to a club alone and have a little more drinks than usual. Why? Because she was under an unprecedented level of stress. Uh, like for a lot of people, a lot of us, alcohol in moderation helps to calm the nerves, right? Went to the club, drank more alcohol than usual, and remember feeling the buzz and getting into the music and all that good stuff. She blacks out. Next thing she knows it, it's the next morning. She's in bed, fully dressed, confused, because she remember being at the club. She remember getting a buzz on. She remember having a drink. She has absolutely no memory of how she got home, which she drives. Her, her car was parked perfectly, and uh, there was no evidence that anyone was with her or came home with her, nothing. And this realization terrified her. She was scared out of her mind. And she learned her lesson, and she never did it again. Now, this is what has happened to someone that I know personally. I've known several people over the years and know people at this very moment. I'm not going to say any names. And please know that I am not making this video um, in judgment. In no shape, form, or fashion. But my soul is pressing me to bring this to the forefront and explain it on a level and in a depth that I had never explained it before. Now there's this song called Blame It On The Alcohol by Jamie Foxx. Very popular hit song and um, and we've heard people do some outrageous things or things they say, yeah, that wasn't me, it was the alcohol. Now I've always said that alcohol can um, if we drink more than enough, uh, or the right amount, I should say that instead. The right amount can help those of us who are suppressing our authentic self-expression. The true self comes out. Alcohol can also do the total opposite. It can completely suppress or block out the self to a point where we are literally out of our minds. And what have I said in videos past? When we are out of our minds, when we are not in control of our faculty, in control of our mind, someone or something else will be controlling our mind for us. That's just the nature of reality. I know people who literally say, I'm going to get fucked up. This weekend, I'm a, I mean, knowing that they're going to get drunk to the point of being totally oblivious to what they're doing and what they're going to do. Totally accepting of the fact that they're going to have a hangover from hell, but they would rather be drunk and out of their mind than to grab hold of the self and handle this beast. Grab it by the horn and handle it. And I know we all have different levels of strengths and weaknesses. We all do. But when it comes to our mind faculty and our consciousness, we shouldn't play around with that. So people such as myself, we, we make these videos and we do these reminders not to be judgmental or to put people down. We are reminding those of us who are not getting this, we are uh, presenting uh, cautionary tales and providing caution to those of us 
who are moving into a higher state of awareness and consciousness and may want to take a different, different route, a different detour, or go about doing things differently. Mind-altering substances can be a tool, again, if we are cognizant and conscious and strong enough to use it to a point where we are in control of it and not it be in control of us. There's a powerful line in the movie um, Doctor Strange where the Ancient One says something to the degree of we never really uh, conquer our demons. We just learn to control them or to be above them. I so agree with that. 100%. So the demon, a powerful demon, and I'm only using terms and words that most people are most comfortable with or completely understand. Universal terms and definitions. That's what I often use in my videos. Not necessarily because I subscribe to those definitions and applications. But the biggest demon or one of the most powerful demons in this world are those vices and tools that we use that is literally opening ourselves up to being manipulated and controlled and fed off of and possessed alcohol in moderation to the respective person taking it. If you know your moderation when you are in control and you are fully cognizant and in control after you drink if you are drinking and you are not in control or cognizant of what you're doing, then you are drinking far more than your fair share. And you are consenting to the possibility of being control fed off of and possessed by astral parasites, astral entities, spirits, again, when we are not in control of our mind and our auric field, astral field, etheric field, whatever you want to call it, it's not strong and our mind and will is not strong, there is a potential for um, compromise, great compromise. And the predators and the parasites are always looking for a host. Parasites are all around us. We can't escape them. They are everywhere. But of course, if you jump in a blue, clean lake, there are going to be some parasites there, but nothing and nowhere as much as if you jump in a swamp. <laughs> and that's the analogy that I could give in terms of these environments in these places that we subject ourselves to or we throw ourselves in, such as, you know, a lot of these clubs and um, uh, people, places, and things who have far more parasites and attachments and entities and possession type situation going on more so than others. And this is where discernment comes in to know the difference. But if we are drunk and high out of our mind, there's no way in the world we could be um, in control or have any sense of self or discernment in that state. Now, why am I talking about this now? I'm talking about this now because I am feeling and sensing that as things get more chaotic and very difficult and its burdens become or feel heavier and people's lives become more stressful and chaotic, there are more people going to the bottle for comfort. Alcohol is the most powerful gateway for the consent or the invite of astral parasites and more. We can no longer use and keep blaming alcohol or I didn't know and all this kind of stuff. When, when it's being presented and you and we in our ego don't want to receive it, it does not change the nature of reality. It does not change the fact. Is it someone who has been to the lowest level of the astral plane, who has retained the memory and above? And I'm telling you what I absolutely have no doubts about. It's even to the point where I can see with the naked eye when parasites jump on people. I can see it. I can see it in their auric field. 
and no one is quite immune. Like I said, no one is totally immune. I don't care if we're vegan, vegetarian. I don't care if we're working out every day. We are always, um, we're always vulnerable to parasites. But again, the key to it is staying above and not putting ourselves in a position where the over, the parasites or the entities will overwhelm and overpower us to the point where we are literally s stuck on a level of consciousness and vibration and we are technically, metaphysically in a prison. We consent to being in prison. There's so many people whose astral body is stuck in the lower astral realm. And you're wondering why can't I astral project? Reptilian-like entities, these, I've described them before. They're feeding off. It's like their astral body is like a generator for them. And as we're up here with the attachments that's pushing us to keep doing the very same things that's fueling that low vibratory realm, we have no clue. The parasites are pushing and driving us to keep consuming more, more fuel to channel in the astral body so that these entities on the lower realm, the overlords in these lower realms can continuously feed off of. And in the process, we are anchored in the same place. We're not progressing. We're not moving forward. That's how real this is. This is why we see people who overconsume these things. They either stay at the same level or they just keep going down, down, down to the point of total self-destruction. Now, let me tell you what these astral parasites, the kind of uh, beings that they target and, and, and most uh, hang around the most. Heavy drinkers. Heavy drug users, people who are very into and connected with violence, psychopaths, sociopaths, promiscuous people, people who are into abusing and molesting children, people who are into using um, their sexual organs, meaning um, putting all kind of uh, inanimate objects stretching and a stretching. <laughs> How else can I say this? Like literally ripping your flesh apart. And in your mind, you see this as pleasure. Again, not a judgment. I'm just simply stating what I've learned. People who are overtly consumed with pornography. Pornography is another powerful gateway for astral uh, parasites and entities and um, and uh, spirits as well. So when I talk about the warnings and the things that I've seen and learned and remembered as a result, take it from a place of immeasurable love, not judgment. Because I honestly, someone, uh, one of my family members wrote it um, in, on, in a comment section of one of my videos. I genuinely want to see everyone free every being this whole ordeal is like a game of chess you have your pawns you have your hierarchy on the board and then you have the two players the majority of us on this planet are pawns in the game the game completely changes when we become the game player you get it and that's when we are in control. We see all of the moving parts. We have no judgment about either of it. We see it for what it is. A part of the experience to challenge the will, to test the will of mind. Think of it in that way. Before I go, I want to say Thank you so much to those who have donated to me as a token of appreciation. I always, always send thank you emails and notices to everyone who take the time to send me a, a donation of appreciation. I never, ever, ever. So if you have ever donated to me, you did not hear from me. Please know either I didn't get the donation for whatever reason or the email, you did not get it. Now, I know for a fact that emails have been uh, intercepted. 
from both ends going in and out. There is one person who sent me a donation. I sent a thank you email and I have not heard from them. Usually people respond back in acknowledgement of the email, but I have not heard from this person. I'm not going to say your name because you may want to remain anonymous, but I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I don't take anything for granted. Thank you all so much. And on that note, I see y'all around the next time around. I'm getting ready to go get my workout on. As y'all can tell, I'm, I'm tightening it up, you know. <laughs> Anyway, immeasurable love always, y'all, and I'll see you next time around. That's it.